Hi, everybody. Everyone doing okay? So I know a lot of people, uh, we have a PIP going from Andre and EG. We've been talking about EG for a while. Uh, Bull's last stand on the one hour is a moving average that everyone could see. Hi, David. Hi, Glenn. Everyone doing okay? All right. And I want to welcome all our viewers from investing.com. Have a great guest today, Kip Herridge. Uh, you guys are bulls. Kip has been bullish from, gosh, uh, the, for as long as I've been talking to him and interviewing him. So I'm going to be uh, interested in what sectors he's interested in still, uh, what kind of discipline he has for taking profits. Uh, will there ever be a bear market again in the history of markets? So we'll We'll be talking to Kip uh, at the top of the hour. Dixie finally rolled over. So I was real early uh, last week on Friday. I started scaling in and uh, got bailed. Uh, this was one of my, between here and 60, one of my initial objectives, as you can see right here. Uh, it's an important pivot. If we get through here, look at this gap. And I just discovered this last night. Uh, that could be where we're going. If we're not going to take out the low of the move, just to shake out dollar bulls one more time and take out 95.80, this gap looks like also a reasonable target. Um, yen under pressure with the dollar. Uh, I'm going to be interested in watching both of them and seeing which one digs in their heels first. Um, my bias is that the yen will start acting better than the dollar. Uh, what I'm will be looking for would be a hard down day in the dollar and the yen not giving up much. Hello, Claudia. Everyone know what I'm talking about. So say, for example, you have the Dixie down, you know, 40 on the day, 30, 40 on the day and us dollar yen is a rock and not giving up much. So, um, my inclination is that the yen will dig in its heels before the dollar turns. So that's going to be a market tell be talking about. And with the yen under pressure, uh, something uh, the whole team has been talking about really is uh, the gold. And we're not that far away. They're trying to turn it here. But, you know, anyone that's been listening to me, and maybe they turn it again and give the bears hope, but I've been skeptical of this double top. Here's a reason why. An 84 reading at the high, this was not a new high, so there was no divergence. Now, if we make a new high, there could be some divergence, but it could be sharply higher uh, if when we get through this 1438 level, it could be, you know, 1480, 1500, and uh, you could cue off uh, a potential precious metal top with when you think U.S. dollar yen is starting to act better. Claudia, you're not a gold digger, are you? If you trade FX uh, successfully, you don't have to be. <laughs> All right, so we'll see. I, I don't believe in this double top. Uh, something else that's happening, I uh, just want to show this on TLT. We're not open yet, but uh, again, uh, unusual formation can happen more in stocks because or ETFs because they close. But I just want to show uh, TLT. Or here, we, here we are. Okay. So you see this day here, which was the third drive up here. And the high of this day was uh, 133.39. And the low of this day was 133.51. So there was a 12 point gap on the employment number. We left a gap to the downside. The high here was uh, 33.22. So not even close to filling the gap. Well, close, 30 points away, right? but it's an island, okay? And we're getting a two-week reversal signal. 
Last week, we didn't have one, even though we had that big down day. This week, we're getting one. So with one day left, uh, the off number was uh, 130, 281. So we're uh, 140 points away. Pretty negative. Uh, next stop is about 130. We'll see if we could get back inside this wedge. There. So there you go. And then if we get back inside this wedge, we'll see what happens with the, uh, not the uh, return line of the wedge, but the trend line of the wedge. So the, when you're looking at uptrends, the bottom line is your trend line. And the top line, I don't know if you guys know, it's called a return line. So uh, let's see if it returns to the return line. Okay. And let's see, anything else I really wanted to cover here? You know what I want to really cover here is this. And anyone ever hear of Forex Analytics? I know you've heard of FACE. Thank you, Amanda. So look at this, the guys are active. Winner, big winner, Andre. Andre on fire on Kiwi. Andre entering Euro pound. Blake uh, riding the bull market in gold. There's his target, 14.55. We get through that. Uh, 1440 level, uh, Blake's target will be there. And look at Grega. So look at all these winning pattern in plays. So a uh, very good week for the team. There's no I in team. Right? And, you know, guys, uh, I, I challenge you to find a place where you could, in one, one stop, Get Elliott, Harmonics, Basic, Sticks, and Macro on anything you're looking at. And also, this space webinar is brought to you by Forest Park FX. Okay. Hi, Kurt. So there's no law against having more than one account. And you can be reimbursed if you're an active trader or get a rebate check called Trent Justin. I know a lot of traders have uh, more than one account, one for day trading, one for swing, one for position trading. So these guys will, are very responsive. Um, they're ethical and they're going to be looking to help you. They help themselves by helping you. It's kind of our mantra here at Forex Analytics, we feel that if we're helping you, we're doing our job. So uh, every week we come in here, we look forward to helping traders to build them up and edify them. And uh, here's an example of how we do it. Blake Morrow, good morning to you. Hey, good morning, Coach. How you doing? Good, buddy. So uh, some follow through to the downside in the dollar. Um, nice gold pip, Blake. and Good hold, you know, the people talk about making a good call, that's one thing. Then executing on the call is the most important thing. Oh, and, well, thanks. And then the toughest thing is holding it. Well, let, let, let me let me let me be clear here. I uh, uh, yesterday, um, you know, thanks for the compliment, but I I'll, I'll yeah. tell you I'm not I'm not the best gold trader in the world. I've been buying and selling gold probably five times over the yeah. last week and a half. Um, now, I mean, ultimately, I guess if you, if you go, well, if you just bought it and sold it, uh, let me see, like, like you know, if, if I yeah, bought it, and, if I, if I bought it wherever where I'm looking here, um, bought it at, you know, let's say 1392 and currently it's trading at 1419, I've probably made the equivalent maybe even a little bit more out of the multiple trades that I've been long. However, yesterday I did trade it frustratingly poorly. Um, so I do want to 
take some shine off of your compliment here. I, I bought it at 1390, not last night, the night before last, uh, at 1390 on this dip. So when it, you know, uh, 1390, I, I owned it down here, right? So oh, yeah. right here, I guess this is an hourly. So this is like two nights ago. So I bought it here because I know, I know it dipped down into the 80s. Uh, two nights ago, because Chi asked me, you know, hey, do, 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 are you going to buy the, 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 uh, he was asking me like, you know, this is as I came back from Montana uh, on our vacation. He said, hey, you're going to buy it down here. And I said, yeah, you know, I'm going to pick it up at 1390. So I picked it up at 1390 on this dip. And then yesterday on this rip up, I sold it at 1402. Um, and I, I was like, woo, yeah, you know, I made a nice little, you know, a nice little gain. But, you know, look at it now. I mean, you know, so did I do that well in it? You know, I mean, I made some money. I, you know, could have made a, you know, just a lot more money. Um, it, but I, but I guess ultimately over the you know multiple times that I've traded gold on the long side, the last uh, uh, couple of, um, you know, week and a half or whatever, I've done really well with it. And I probably exceeded what that pattern in play is. But remember the patterns in play that you see here are more biases um, you know, I, I tend to trade in and out of these positions. Um, and I, and I know sometimes the team, you know, you take somebody like Steve, Steve, uh, you know, I, I'll speak on his behalf. Uh, he, he, he tends to, to take a position and sit in it where, you know, I tend to be a little bit more actively scalping. Uh, usually it's because of the size sizing of my positions. I, I tend to take pretty big sizes. And, um, uh, so I, it's harder for me to sit in a big position, long or short, something, uh, whatever, maybe, excuse me one second. Let me just grab a drink. So anyway, um, now, you know, going into yesterday <coughs> and let's talk about like the Euro and everything else. Well, first of all, the Euro has got a little bit of a bull flag formation. We are, um, just, we got a little bit of a bull flag uh, formation. We're, we're just breaking the 38% retracement. Now, this is ahead of the inflation numbers. Now, uh, I would assume if the inflation numbers come in a little weak today, that the dollar is going to continue this rally. And you're going to see a continuation in the, uh, the, the cable that's moving higher here. We're also at a – you can see right at the 38% retracement as well. Uh, the Aussie is breaking higher. Uh, the Kiwi is also, you know, breaking higher. Um, you know, you got the dollar Canadian, which is, you know, pivoting off of these pretty big lows here at 130.50. I don't know if the dollar Canadian is going to break down. Actually, I doubt it's going to break down. Well, I'm hoping it's not going to break down because I, I, I'm, I'm personally, I'm trading long the, uh, the New Zealand Canadian, uh, which we're approaching yesterday's highs and the euro canadian as well so i'm i'm trading those on the long side assuming that the dollar canadian is going to hold uh the support but uh but even if you know even if the uh uh, uh dollar continues to break down as long as the euro and the kiwi go up higher quicker than the dollar Canadian comes down. That's all I really care about personally. Um, but, uh, you know, you, you're just looking at all these dollar pairs. Here's the Swissy, you know, Swissy looks like we're, you know, we're, we're reversing course back to the downtrend. Uh, same with the U S dollar Norwegian Krona after a rejection of this big trend line, uh, U S dollar Swedish Krona as well. Uh, a little false breakout here led to a breakdown. Um, you know, the dollar looks just weak and I was, you know, reading a couple of, uh, you know, bank reports overnight. And um, the market seems not short the dollar. Uh, the market still seems pretty long the dollar. So I think on a weak number, um, you know, weak inflation, uh, inflationary number, the, the euro is going to, you know, continue to, to, to rally towards, uh, you know, 113. And I think we can, we can trade it pretty pretty squarely up through 113, maybe even towards 113 and a quarter up here. Um, well, the question is if we get a, if we get a strong inflation number today, if that, that, that's really how I, you know, I'm kind of thinking what, how am I going to play this? Because I do think that inflation data is going to miss 
Uh, I don't think Powell had the inflation data yesterday. We reached out to the traders uh, on the trade desk at JP Morgan. They don't believe that, you know, uh, uh, Fed Chairman Powell had the had the data um, yesterday as well. But if that data continues to be, or if, if the data weakens, inflation data weakens, because this is what, you know, the market is really more or less worried about. If the, if the, if it's if it's going to be if it's going to be weak, then the the Fed's going to continue this this uh, this path on you know keeping rates low, you know maybe cutting rates uh, further and faster than the market really wants or expects, and um, that like I said, that's going to press the euro higher. I'm not a big euro bull. It's you know I don't look at the euro, and let's just make this clear. I don't look at the euro thinking, oh, the euro's heading back to 120. Uh, I think the euro is going to be really, really hard pressed to get back above the 115, 116 level. I think this is going to be a very tough resistance uh, longer term. So if you, you know, if you look at the euro and you go, okay, well, you know, where 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 could we really go here? You know, 115, uh, one, you know, 114 and changes the 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 uh, you know 24 percent retracement, 38 percent retracement, 116 and, and some change. I think this is all going to be very difficult resistance for the euro, but that doesn't mean that the euro doesn't have any legs from here. That, that doesn't mean that the euro can't move. Remember, one of the big catalysts for me that has been um, keeping the dollar on the defensive. And I think that the dollar will continue to be on the defensive solely because I think gold is broken out. And yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's consolidating right now, but let's not ignore the fact. And I know I say this pretty much every day. Let's not ignore the fact that we broke out of a six year trading range in gold and it's holding. You, you know, a lot of people go, Oh, you know, gold, and it's so weak. It's not participating to the upside. No, no, no. I don't think, that's the case. I think the dollar is not participating on the downside yet. Okay. But like I said, if the Euro goes to 115, that's probably going to put gold at one or 1500, you know, 1480, 1500, something like that. So I, I look at gold and I'm, all I can think is, man, gold looks bullish. Gold looks like it could really break out here. And if gold breaks out, I wouldn't want to be long the dollar as that's happening. I just wouldn't. So going back to my original uh, thought process, if the, the inflation data is strong, what I'm really looking to do today is I'm looking to short the dollar yen. Whoops, where is the dollar yen? Oh, here it is. You know, I'm looking to short the dollar yen. I, I would, I, I've, been, I've been arguing for a 107.50 to 109, you know, range, which I think this is what we're doing. I, I, I believe this you know, to be the case uh, near term. I think we're kind of uh, um, developing some sort of inverted head and shoulder pattern. Looks like this. But what does that mean for today? Well, for today, we could do this, you know, like that. I, you know, I, I think that any rally to 108.50, I want to be a seller. So if we can get a rally in the dollar yen because of a stronger inflation number, I'm, I'm down with that. You know, I, I'm, I'm really, I'm really down with that. If, if, if CPI comes in better than expected, you know, Euro is going to pull back to one twelve sixty five. dollar yen might, you know, push back up towards one Oh eight 30 to one Oh eight 50. I'm a seller up there. I, I'd like to play this, you know, on, on the short side and then eventually, you know, look for a continuation higher because I do believe that stocks are, are still strong here. And I think stocks are going to stay strong going into, um, you know, some sort of uh, China deal. All right. But near term, uh, near term, and I'm talking near term when I'm talking near term, I'm talking today. Uh, today, I'd like to actually be a seller of the dollar yen on, on any pop. Now, that's, there's no guarantee that I'm going to get that. Um, there's, you know, I'm, I'm just hoping for a stronger, um, I'm just hoping for a stronger inflation uh, number. That's really what I'm hoping for. Cause it's, it's hard for me to play a weak number. Um, Cause I don't own the Euro right at this moment in time. I don't own the Euro. I, I'd like to buy the Euro cause I think the Euro could make an easy move up to 113 and change. I just hate chasing the market. 
um, as most of you know. But you know, can't ignore the fact that we got a bull flag pattern. So if we if we start you know pressing into new highs because of a weak number, you, you kind of got to chase it. It's just the the question is how far are you going to go? I mean, uh, you know, again, one thirteen, one thirteen and change is what I'm looking for today in the euro on a weak um, a weak uh, CPI number. And 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 like I said, we're not guaranteed to get a weak or a strong number. I'm just trying to kind of um, giving you guys a, uh, a, a an overview of how I feel about um, e- either situation, and I'm I'm ready to take advantage in either such si- situation today uh, as well. I I don't I don't I don't have any dollar um, positions on at the moment. Uh, I am playing uh, the Canadian crosses. So, uh, therefore I'm, I'm pretty open to, uh, to, um, you know, unbiased and open to playing either side at this moment. I have been playing the dollar on the short side, the last 24 hours, you know, yesterday, uh, after Powell's testimony, um, I, I've been, you know, I, I bought the Euro probably three or four times on this rally and did, did well with it. So, um, now I'm just trying to figure out what I want to do from here. And I, and I think that, uh, either, either a strong uh, CPI print or a weak CPI print is going to provide us some opportunities uh, ultimately. So uh, with that being said, uh, you know, I want to, I want to welcome Stelios is probably here. Good morning, Stelios. We got a little bit of a boost in the cable this morning. Hello. Good morning. So why is the cable bit up? The cable's never bit up. Uh, Yeah, actually uh, good question. Uh, I don't know if somebody can help me, but I, I don't see why. Um, we had the, the Bank of England financial stability report, which was released, but really nothing um, nothing extraordinary. Maybe it's because the pound has been underperforming for, what, nine weeks now? Maybe it's... Um, Old-fashioned short squeeze. Yeah, I don't know. But, um, you know, it's, uh, it's... I mean, to be fair, the dollar is... Um, is uh, losing against most uh, majors. Yes, this, uh, the pound is slightly outperforming, but I personally don't see any particular reason. I mean, we had Euro pound, which again re- got rejected at 90, which we've talked about and Steve has talked about and you've talked about in the past. It's a pretty good resistance. So um, I actually did manage to sell a little, a tiny bit there at 90. I, I wrote it in the chat room yesterday. Um, but re- yeah, I, I don't see anything in particular that's... Uh, you know... You know, uh, uh, Joe Perry uh, was on Real Vision. Uh, Joe Perry from the Forex Analytics team was on Real Vision TV, uh, Raul Paul's network, if you guys are not familiar with it. Um, you know, uh, building his case for a short euro pound position. I actually had, and I'm frustrating, so frustrating. I had a uh, an order to sell at 90 90 17 or 90 19 i can't remember exactly what where my order was but but i missed it by like seven to nine pips and i was just what i was hoping for is us to take out this channel resistance just enough to trip some stops and then i was going to reverse and then we just you know hit that hit that channel resistance to a t and um i didn't I didn't yesterday. I didn't sell it at ninety cents, and I'm kind of obviously. I'm at this point. I'm frustrated that I didn't. Uh, but that's. Uh, I mean, you look at you look at the the euro pound. I mean, risk reward favors shorts here. Um, as long as we stay below, let's just say ninety twenty. You know, and that and that that is Joe's case on Real Vision. Now he also explained uh, via harmonics and Elliott waves uh, uh, other reasons why he was selling it up there but there's but you can find all that on Forex analytics because on Forex analytics um, euro pound you'll notice that we have uh, you know um, basic technical analysis harmonic Elliott wave patterns and you can you, you can get all the analysis from here but but basically it was building a case for a confluence of a reversal now uh, the, as far as the euro pound goes you know below, 89.50 and then you know if you're short you, you you'll feel much better about being on the short side there because you'll take out that channel support so you know maybe this cable is just an old-fashioned uh maybe an old-fashioned uh pound squeeze here so uh that's that 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 may be the case so still is what else do you have going on what else do you see that's uh that's really moving the market today uh well it's it's going to be all about uh, well it has been from yesterday all about powell and um 
we have CPI in a few minutes, as you know. And Powell kind of surprised a little bit to the uh, on the on his dovishness, and um, uh, you know, uh, it was it a big surprise? He actually basically confirmed that they're cutting this month. That's what the market was pricing anyway. But you know, the way he um, he basically said uh, that we should kind of ignore the uh, the strong jobs data he didn't i don't remember the exact wording he said but really that was a message and uh, he was uh, more dovish than expected and you know a lot of people say is he is he following what uh, what trump has been asking basically for for the past few months uh, you should say no but really uh, we know we're human beings you know you don't know what everybody has in his head but um, the main thing is that he is more dovish than expected and you know what the fed is like i've seen them cut I, I, when i was a market maker in london i was there at the, for the crisis they cut much faster much uh, more aggressively than the market um, price and that's that's been the case for the last couple of uh, times they needed to cut so that's just something to keep in mind we are pricing almost 100 base points of cuts until for, for the next year and a half or so um it is probably fair, but if I had to choose, I'd probably say if things go bad, they're going to cut much quicker than that. So, and you know, and and let's let's you know to, to his defense, let's not let's not uh, forget that that the Fed sees things that we don't see, and absolutely they, yes, they, 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 there's a yeah, there's a lot of metrics that they see that we don't see as yeah. market participants, uh, spawning from analysts, uh, bank analysts, all the way to us. So. So, that is true. That is very you know, true. But there is a counter argument to that as well. They seem to not uh, see things that are very obvious to everybody. Yeah, and 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 that's and and uh, and and that you know it, you know it doesn't mean that it that he's bending a knee to Trump necessarily, but um, you know that's how it's probably being viewed at this moment. Uh, so, yeah. so hey, um, I, I've got to get to the, I've got to get to, uh, to to trading the CPI number. But uh, good morning, Steve. Hope good morning, Blicker. Well. Um, I am. I'm going to pass it over to you guys. Uh, and and for those of you that are listening, and remember, uh, make sure you you uh, you visit Forest Park FX. They are our partners in the Face webinar. Um, you can be involved with the Face community, so you can be involved with our you know our our exclusive chat room that you can see right here. You know, you can be involved with that that exclusive chat room, um, and and get access to our platform uh, through the reimbursement program. So um, make sure you uh, make sure you do that when you get an opportunity. I'm sorry, guys, I had to take you off jumbotron because I got to get to the markets, and um, and uh, we'll talk to you guys uh, tomorrow. Thank you, Blake. Thanks, guys. Thank you, mate. I'm taking the screen. Yes. So yeah, I mean, I think I think Blake is absolutely right. You know, these guys are not stupid. They know what they're doing, and uh, they probably have access to much more information than we do. Not probably, they do have much more. Oh, access they, much they more do. There's no question about it. So we can only but, say what yeah. we see, but uh, yeah. Yeah, anyway. but the on uh, the other hand, they 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 seem to look the other way on very basic facts like that. You know, you know, they are they are the nemesis of the vast majority of the uh, monetary and fiscal issues that we currently have. Fiscal yeah, issues because yeah. they, they enable governments to be extremely um, un, imprudent in, in, in the way they act. Well, he did say yesterday that he's, uh, was it Powell or was it somebody else who said that, from the Fed who said that he's very uncomfortable with the uh, total level of debt? Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm very and, un you know, uncomfortable with the total yeah. level of debt, so let well, me cut take, rates and make it easier. So yeah, take rates to, you know, 5 6%, and then debt becomes a little bit more expensive, you know? So, um, <laughs> exactly. But yeah, you, you, you know, uh, we can only speculate. So, um, okay, so we have a minute until numbers. So what else do we have today? What Actually, else do we have? Very, I'm, very I'm, light, very light data-wise. Data we had the German CPI came in in line, boring, who cares anyway, point one here, point one there. Um uh actually very little to say um yeah i'm uh, actually i'm speechless i don't know <laughs> okay still, you don't have that much yeah, to right. yeah. you think jay powell knows about three drives to the top and bottom <laughs> well i do know he's, he probably knows the cpi print <laughs> yeah. <laughs> in think. advance yeah so yeah, it's, uh, our president. Yeah, we were having this conversation earlier with C. He, he believes that you know uh, what he said yesterday is uh, probably having knowledge of the numbers, and I agree with him. This is a very high probability scenario, so I would favor a weak CPI print for that reason. If that happens, 
we should see continuation lower for the dollar after yesterday's reversal, which was quite important. And today, let's see. We're actually, core that. CPI 0.3 yeah. versus 0.2. No, actually, it's a, it's, it's slightly better. stronger. Uh, so that's not the case. It was a good assumption, but not the case. Initial jobless claims, ah, more or less as expected. Yeah. CPI data slightly stronger uh, across the board. Canadian uh, data slightly worse. Housing. Canadian data slightly uh, slightly worse. So let's see if the USD CAD is rebounding once again from the previous low. Yes, it is one, once again finding support here at the 38.2. Uh, but as we've said, 130 is key, which is like 60 pips lower. That's like a major confluence of supports for the USD Canada. Um, so, as you see, the dollar is actually strengthening following the data. Now, uh, will that produce continuation? I'm assuming that the market uh, will likely remember uh, Powell's comments yesterday about inflation. Uh, and when he makes that comment, he obviously takes into account a lot more than a single CPI print. So, I'm a little bit skeptical that we're going to have continuation uh, higher for the dollar. But so far, the dollar is rebounding. We can see euro is off the highs. The cable is as well. Oh, every, every, everything across the board. USD yen is the one that seems to be benefiting more uh, from here, to be honest. USD yen, which yesterday rejected um, the retest of these long-term symmetrical triangles support. Coach? Is there a huh? ghost? Is there a ghost there who you're talking to? <laughs> huh? Am I talking to myself? <laughs> yeah, oh don't my worry. goodness. I huh? do it I do it all the time. I'm not the, <laughs> the mic's open and I'm talking to myself. Oh boy. You're turning uh, into Steve, man. You're talking a lot. Uh, yeah, you're uh, talking uh, into me. What the hell? <laughs> uh, I'll have a new nickname, Dementia Dale. <laughs> all right anyway <laughs> thank you guys for making me feel old uh, all worry. right anyway i, I feel older, older how are how are you today dale oh i don't know how you doing dale <laughs> you know gemini steve you know what that's like you know, oh yeah you talk uh, to your twin yeah absolutely that's the case all right all right that's my excuse <laughs> <laughs> all right i'm muting so i could Talk to myself uh, privately. <laughs> <laughs> so the dollar still above the 200 daily moving average, but let's be honest, we've been oscillating here for some time. I have to admit that you know there are two possible ways to view this uh, price action, and um, you know don't feel bad if you really don't have a high conviction at the moment. That's not because you can't read the market; it's because the market lately is rather difficult to read and you know the dollar which we know that you know it's a, it's a major component of whatever happens to markets as you see you know on one hand you know it had been moving lower but on the other hand momentum uh, was lacking now that we rebounded higher we seem to be breaking above this descending channel um you know after being above it like for a couple of days yesterday we reversed lower um without having uh, posted a higher high, which means that, you know, no real conviction that we're continuing higher, but on the other hand, no real momentum that we're continuing lower. So this is a tough market to read and trade at the moment. So, you know, you really need to take that seriously into account uh, and, you know, adjust accordingly your leverage, um, uh, you know, the way you want to press on uh, positions, your targets. Uh, I mean, Probably this is a market that is, although this is not my style, as you know, but this is a market that you'd rather uh, trade with shorter time frames in the um, in mind uh, than anything else, because you know we don't have like a major trend or, ma or a major direction at the moment. Uh, of course, with the exception of stocks, which you know have been in a, a you know larger trend, effects effects land. Steve. Yes, the sorry, sorry to interrupt. Before you no move on to that, um, you were talking about the dollar index. Mm -hmm, Can mm -hmm. you pull up the the actual dollar uh, chart, not the XY? I, I, it's just something I've been talking, uh, I've been mentioning. In you the, mean US dollar? The US average. dollar, yes, yes, US dollar. You know, yeah. we, we've said this before. We've moved from end of 2018 to now from pricing 
very small hikes to now pricing 100 basis points of cuts. Look at what the dollar has done since then. Because forget about DXY, it's a lot of euro in there. 50% is euro and the euro has... I, I agree. And, and for, for the people that don't know what this index is, this is a basket. First of all, uh, one of the problems of the DXY, as Stelios mentioned, is that it was created before the eurozone was formed. So once the eurozone was formed, several of the currencies that were part of the DXY basket, all of them now became the euro, right? And that has made the index, the DXY index, uh, very eurocentric. Because if you consider the fact that like something like 65% in total is like the euro USD, the USD SEC, which is extremely, you know, very highly correlated with euro USD, uh, the Swiss, uh, the USD Swiss, which is also extremely you know, very highly correlated, um, you know, in essence, like two thirds of what the index does is more or less, more or less what the euro USD does. Um, now, on the other hand, this US dollar index was created later in time, having, um, you know, a, a better balanced um, yes. uh, um, basket of currencies. It, it includes also the Aussie, the CAD, the Yen, um, you know, more it's equal. a much more neutral uh, index, basically. Yeah, m- yeah, exactly, and, exactly. And, and as you see, and I, I guess this is your point, Stelio. Yes. That we've had like a prolonged consolidation here, so the US dollar index shows even more um, clearly that you know we we are in a period of consolidation, right? So something has to has to catch up. Either rates are going to have to come back up, or the dollar has to go down. I mean, it's uh, you can't price in cuts in one asset class and not in the other. You know? so, I, I totally agree with you. I totally agree with you. And and to be fairly honest, especially if you look at this uh, chart, a continuation higher, an eventual continuation higher looks likely because we've we've seen quite a strong move higher and usually periods of consolidation like this get resolved in the direction of the previous move of the previous trend, which in this case is higher. Of course, there are exceptions because sometime, sometimes you might have like bottoming or um, uh, topping patterns that look like triangles. A very good example of the same index you can find here. I mean, it would have, me- it would have made a very valid point, you know, when we were trading uh, in this uh, congestion area during uh, 2018 for somebody to expect a continuation lower. Um, so uh you know um to, to expect this to, to get resolved in the direction of the previous trend this is not what happened but on the other hand you still have a you know a very uh, easy formation to track which means once you broke above this triangle you know that it's not uh you know a regular triangle and in this case um you know you know that you're going to have the opposite uh, move unfolding which actually happened i mean we had a quite a strong uh, move higher, and this ended up being um, a bottoming pattern. So, Stelio, yes, thank you very much. That was a very, very valid point about um, the US uh, dollar index here. And I think it it makes very clear what I was saying. I mean, uh, the dollar is in a prolonged consolidation, as you very well said. This cannot continue for much longer. Um, and this is an extra reason why I think you should be quite prudent, because sooner rather than later, I do expect that we're going to have a breakout and then we're going to see a nice, healthy uh, move with momentum. Uh, I don't know if it's going to be higher or lower. As I said, uh, statistically speaking, I would expect that higher is a likelier scenario for at least one more thrust higher. Um, uh, but, you know, you, you can just track the chart. And, you know, once we're breaking out, you know that that's the time that you can start pressing uh, on positions. Now. Having said that, um, there is still um, something to be said about so many currency pairs that we were looking at the beginning of the week, saying that they all uh, were testing major areas of resistance or support, and they seem to have reacted from them, or after falsely breaking, like uh, incrementally breaking above or below, they reversed. And that is also something to take into account. So. Um, in this in this case, I think it's a good idea if I go over those that we were looking at the beginning of the week. Just give me five seconds because my headphones are going out of battery, so I need to plug them in.
Okay, done. So uh, let's start from the cable because I think it's one of the most interesting. We were looking um, two days ago um, at the chart when we were actually testing this trend line support. I remember specifically that our friend Costas bought it then, um, and I said, you know, this is a you know this is a great place to be buying because you have only one thing going for you, but you know this is an important thing, which is a risk reward. We were testing this trend line, and you know, by drawing that trend line as well, you get in your hands what looks like a descending wedge. Of course, it is not a descending wedge until you break above that uh, wedge resistance. But we were definitely uh, testing a trend line support, so you know that could count for something, and it did. Now, uh, would I be bullish the cable here? No, I wouldn't. But if we do break above this trend line resistance, I will. I mean, I would expect a continuation higher. The RSI was already diverging here on the daily. Uh, we found the support, and if we break through resistance, I think that at the very least, initially, we should see an extension to retest once again this solid resistance. I mean, we found resistance multiple times multiple times in this 127.60, 127.80, 90, whatever zone. Uh, so at, at the very least, I would expect that with a break above like 126.30, mm -hmm. we should at least extend 50, 60 pips to retest that resistance area. And, you know, a break above there is going to be an even more important bull signal since, as, I've, as I said, you know, just a few seconds ago, uh, this zone has been capping any rebound that we've had in cable since uh, mid-May. Okay, so breaking above there uh, is probably going to trigger, uh, you know, several uh, stop losses or new positions, and you know that is definitely something to take into account. Now, having to do with Euro USD, I, I would be a little bit skeptical here, and the reason is uh, simply the fact that I was looking at this ascending trend line. Uh, sorry, ascending channel and its trend line support specifically. When we were moving lower, we broke below it. And for the time being, we seem to be retesting it as the resistance. So before I turn bullish the euro USD and more bearish the dollar, I would want to see the euro USD taking out again uh, this trend line, in which case, um, you know, I'll know that it's not really important anymore. So, you know, it, it shouldn't be considered uh you know as a resistance line anymore in which case we will still be in the more basic pattern uh scenario here which is we had the descending wedge we broke above it we came down almost retested it and you know we're st we still have the potential of moving higher but as we've seen in 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 the dollar index and the us dollar you know a few minutes ago as you see there is not like a clear upside momentum here. So you have one thing going for you here as well, which is the risk reward, but not confirmation, not yet at least. What seems to be more, uh, you know, lively uh, here is the USD Swiss. This is one of the charts we were showing at the beginning of the week, saying that, you know, this, this move lower has been in a megaphone formation, expanding triangle, you can call it whatever you want. It's the same exact thing that you're describing. Um, we were looking at this chart when we were actually testing resistance. Uh, we had like a little false break higher, but yesterday's reversal left behind an evening star formation on the daily, which is quite a nice uh, bearish reversal pattern. You can see it here, those three candlesticks. And today so far we're seeing continuation lower. So you know, use this Swiss likely a little false break higher, which keeps the pair under pressure until, um, you know, something different emerges. But so far, I'm going to take that as a rejection. Sometimes, you know, not everything works that perfectly. And at the beginning of the week, along with the USD Swiss, I was also showing the USD SEC because it, it had a very similar pattern. You can see it here. Um, somebody can even make the case that use the Swiss actually never even broke higher. It depends on how you draw like the weeks, uh, how you pass the trend line from the weeks or bodies of the candle. You can see that use the Swiss got rejected from support resistance area and from this descending 
uh, megaphone formations, um, trend line resistance, and at the same time, this was the, and most importantly, this was the ascending wedges broken support that acted as a resistance. So nice rejection from confluence of resistances for the QSD sec. That was a very nice uh, trade potential uh, because, you know, amazing risk reward ratio, confluence of support and resistances. That's what we like to aim for uh, here in Forex Analytics. That is why we, you know, talked about in several presentations about the um, importance and power of, um, you know, trading with confluences. Um, and, you know, the path of least resistance, as long as we remain below that area, uh, definitely uh, remains the downside. Why not? Uh, continuation lower would target next this uh, key 910 um, support resistance area. But before that, we have to face the previous low, which is now confluencing with the 200 daily moving average. As you see, this has converged. It's almost one on top of the other at 9.24. Now, USD knock unfortunately seems to have uh, fooled me because the last part of my position, uh, its stop loss got triggered. Of course, that was in profit as well, but I mean, I could have benefited a lot more. We were mentioning yesterday and the day before yesterday again that it's on a very key area because uh, it was retesting once again, this um, one and a half year old uh, ascending channels support this time as resistance because we have actually broken below it. And this seems to have done the work. We're actually now also breaking below this. Um, I was looking at this as a bear flag. We overshot it, but now we're testing it's important. You know, we are in danger of actually breaking lower, in which case we are targeting 840 once again. I needless to say that 840 is a super, super critical area for the trend um, for multiple reasons. One of them is that it's 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 acted as support resistance in many, many occasions since 2015. But another one is that you know we had like a prolonged uh corrective pattern lower channeled as you see. And, you know, roughly at 840, we also find this broken channel resistance, which might act as support. But anyhow, 840 uh, might easily be retested now that we're breaking below that area. Of course, uh, one of the main reasons, uh, it's oh, obviously the dollar is a, the most important reason. But one of the main reasons that used the NOC has been also um, suffering, NOC has been finding a good bid another uh, way to say it um, is the fact that crude has been uh, moving strongly higher. Initially, when we rebounded, I expected that crude should get rejected from that area and continue lower, but this actually didn't happen. I didn't have high conviction. That's why I didn't trade it. But, you know, I, I believe that, you know, the initial rebound was looked corrective. Afterwards, we accelerated higher. Um, so as long as crude is doing well, USD knock is obviously going to remain under pressure, most likely. Keep in mind, though, that, you know, USD, US uh, oil crude uh, is now testing a key area. You can see that this is the 61.8 of this whole move lower. Also, just a little bit higher at the highs that we had today, you can find previous congestion lows here at 60, 80, 60, 90, uh, back then when we were trading in May, when we were finding support there in May. Okay, so be a little bit careful here. Uh, buying on a resistance really makes uh, no sense. I'm not saying that we're going to move lower from here, but definitely uh, this is an area to watch. You can see it here on the four-hour chart as well. Um, so who knows? We might correct lower from here or we might even reverse lower from uh, we need more evidence, of course, than just a little reversal candle on the four-hour chart because th so far that's on that's the only thing we have. Um, but once again, for all those reasons that I mentioned, from a risk reward perspective, fading crude here makes sense because you you need to risk very very little in order for you to uh, make uh, more. Um, now 
having to do with euro pound, you can view it as a um, as an ascending channel, as Blake had, but my preferred uh, interpretation, as I've been showing for days, and I'm showing it again because I think it's one of the better opportunities out there at the moment, is this, the ascending wedge that I have here on the daily, in combination with this nice RSI divergence that, that, that divergence that has been ongoing since the beginning of the year, and most importantly, this long-term descending channels resistance, nice triple confluence. Uh, and we're currently, if I need to add one more, we're currently, of course, the day is not over yet, but we're currently working on posting an evening star formation on the daily chart. So adding another element here, a shorter term element, one of the most uh, potent reversal patterns that you can find on the candlestick um, uh, chart, which is the evening star formation, the opposite is the morning star formation. Uh, now, what is missing? What is missing is a lower low. At the same time, in this case, it's going to be a break below this ascending wedges support. Uh, where is that? Uh, at 89.50. So my point of view, a move be below 89.50 uh, gives you a great trade because in essence, you have a 70 pip stop loss and you're looking initially for 100 pips lower because the next area of support is at 88.50. So, you know, uh, even if you wait for confirmation and you sell a break below 89.50 uh, gives you a better than one to one risk reward ratio with a very, very nice probability of working out if you're asking me my personal point of view. Um, so I do think that Euro Pound is a very, very, very nice um, uh, trade at the moment. Uh, one of the better opportunities out there. Sometimes, you know, when you don't have clarity in the dollar which is, or the yen, which are important because, you know, the vast majority of the trades uh, and the most liquid currencies either include uh, the dollar or the uh, yen or, or the euro. Um, uh, there are, you know, um, other rates, crosses you can trade. Uh, that's why I think, and I've said it multiple times, that it is quite important uh, for somebody to be monitoring multiple markets because if you're not doing so, then you're trying to force uh, yourself to trade on things that aren't so clear just because they look better than other alternatives. But if you're watching, you know, several uh, charts at the same time, there is, you know, inevitably one or two good opportunities at any given time among like 30, 40 or 50 markets. Okay. Uh, so one that is one of the big advantages, in my opinion, of, uh, you know, monitoring and trading multiple markets instead of just focusing on two or three. Um, but, you know, that's my personal preference. Uh, other people might have a different insight in that. And I'm not saying that there are not, people out there that are very successful by trading a very, very few selected number of markets. Now, uh, as I mentioned very briefly before, USD card is also at a very, very key uh, juncture. If only I could find it. There it is. Um, 38.2 seems to be holding for now, but I have to admit that the price action that we've had here in the short term looks more like a consolidation, like a little rectangle than anything else. And that is something that you usually expect to be resolved in the direction of the previous trend, which in this case is lower. The problem here being though, that if we do break below this consolidation, we are just gonna be a few pips away from this super critical area of support. You can see why that's the case. 130 is both a psychological level and then, and perhaps for that reason as well, a level that has acted multiple times in the past as support resistance. But most importantly in this case is uh, the area from which these ascending channels support passes from, keep in mind that this ascending channel dates back to July 2017, which makes it two years old, um, which makes it very important for the market, obviously, right? So... I can't see it being easy for the market to break below that area and not producing 
continuation. I'm not saying that it can happen or that it hasn't happened before, but that's not a likely scenario. So if we break below this little consolidation and then we break below 130, I think that we're going to see a lot more weakness coming through from uh, the USD card. Okay, so, uh, you know, you like it to the upside. You know, you have the benefit that you have a very tight risk-reward ratio. You buy it here. You put your stop loss a little bit below 130. And, you know, you at least you know what you're risking and you know what uh, you're looking to make, which is, you know, at least a move back to this um, rectangle's resistance and most likely higher than that. I would be looking for 130 to 40 after that. Um, so. Uh, Let's have a look at the boons because I wanted to mention it yesterday and I forgot to do so. If you remember, I was looking for an eventual correction lower in the boons. And unsurprisingly, that's what happened once we broke below this. Last time we looked at them, we were actually testing support of this ascending channel. We've now broken below it and it seems like the boons are finally producing a correction lower. Keep in mind that this is most likely a corrective move because you know this has been a textbook bullish chart huge move higher abc correction lower big move higher complex long term correction lower we broke above it we consolidated we accelerated higher basically that means in a few words that I expect the boons to find support at some point above 166.70, uh, which is previous support. Might happen a lot higher than that. I'm just saying that, you know, uh, worst case scenario, would expect a move towards 166.70. Most likely we're going to find support before that. Um, but still, that leaves quite a, a lot of room for a corrective move. I chose to be short instead the treasuries because the treasuries had made the move uh to break down from this uh wedge earlier unfortunately my bad luck is that uh, immediately after i took that position the boons started underperforming uh the treasuries which hadn't been the case the, the opposite had been the case for a long period of time and now we have um a uh, little period of time already that, you know, the opposite seems to be happening. I don't know if that's going to be something that's going to last uh, longer or not. Of course, this divergence explains the move lower that we've seen in the dollar and the rebound that we've seen in Euro USD. So it's not nothing like magical. Um, so, you know, uh, this explains it because simply put, we've seen an appreciation of uh, the yields um, uh, in for Germany, for example, um, um, you know, happening uh, in a faster pace than uh, the equivalent in, in treasuries during the past few days. Um, Coach, do we have an interview, by the way, today? Super Bowl, Kip Herridge is with us. Super Bowl. Okay. Not just a bull, a Super Bowl. Yeah, Kip is a super guy. Okay. And uh, as long as I've been talking to him, he's been constructive to bullish and talking about these higher levels uh, for a few years now. So uh, corrections didn't shake his conviction. And here we are at new highs. So that should is be a good interview. That is that is very uh, important to hear. I mean, it's not easy. No, it uh, isn't. it's not easy to remain bullish in such a prolonged trend. Uh, that has gone against logic and fundamentals multiple times. So kudos to him. Good for him. Uh, yeah, just, just, I'm sure he. Uh, I, I'm sure that he thinks it hasn't gone against fundamentals. So some of the things that we worried about, obviously he, the S and P's did not. If his base case is that valuations uh, make sense up here, and that's why he's bullish. Well, we'll find out. Kudos, kudos to him for being lucky. If you ask, if you're asking me, and I know he, I know he's probably listening in. I have no problem having a healthy debate. I'm just saying, if uh, you know he realizes that monetary policy is the thing that's supporting it, and he's going with it, kudos to him. In all honesty, yeah, it's not luck. 
when you've been doing this for decades, you can't call it luck anymore. Steve. Ask me again once I see what he has done after the market's reverse for good. Okay, well, all right, I'll I'll ask you in uh, twenty <laughs> in twenty twenty one. I doubt it. It's after the long. Democrats win. That's my <laughs> guess. Anyway, so uh, no, thank it is you. very li- it is very likely, but give me a yeah, second. I, I don't think uh, the S and P's are going to like Bernie Sanders. Oh, I have or, no doubt. Or Kamala Harris or any of the Democrats that they, they are going to like, left. They are going to like modern monetary. In people. fact. They're trying to turn America into Greece. What a tragedy. Uh, I doubt it. It seems that you're headed southern than that. <laughs> I, I, that's hard to believe, but at least we have a high bar to go for. That is very true. That is very true. Oh, okay, buddy. Um, uh, I had a question but, about you. Is this are, give me one second. Oh, yeah. yeah um, talk about the czar. Use the czar has broken below this channel. Seems to be accelerating lower. Keep in mind, we're below the 250 DMA and the that we're breaking below 61.8. So I have to say that if you're looking lower, it seems that you're in the right direction to begin with. And one last question that I had, and I'll cover it very briefly. The pound Ozi, pound Ozi probably remains still within a rebound that looks corrective in nature to me. Uh, so I wouldn't be surprised if you know we continue lower after breaking below this uh, little flag. So... Um, you know, I would maintain a bearish bias here, especially as long as we remain below 180, Thank you, Coach. Enjoy the interview. Okay. Are you having a good week, Steve? Just curious. So far? Yeah, it's fine. Oh, how lucky. <laughs> All right, Kip. I'm going to bring you on now. <laughs> what a lucky guy you are, Steve. I am. I am. You are. You're blessed. And we are to have you. Okay, Kip, it's been a while. As you can tell, I'm a fan. Let me just make sure that uh, you're unmuted. You are now. And let me know if you're going to share your screen. Otherwise, I'll take it over. You, Welcome you back, Kip. Thank you, Dale. Huh? Appreciate it. Welcome back, buddy. Great being here. I the, I like the uh, I like the two subjects you talked about here: luck and Dems winning. The, if, if the Dems are going to win next year. Be ready to short everything. This market That's what I thought was going to be your fundamental reason oh. for the end of the bull market. I, Listen, I, I, I agree as well. Go ahead. So I've done this 34 years. So uh, you know, I, I've had a lot of bad luck. I'll tell you that much. But I figured, <laughs> you know, <laughs> maybe I figured stuff when we're out. wrong, it's when we're wrong, it's bad luck. And when we're right, we're geniuses. Oh, when, when you're wrong, you believe that you've done something terribly wrong to the universe and there's a black cloud over you and you get like 10 tra- trades wrong in a row and you're cursed, right? Yeah. Uh, so, but you know, I, I have a little bit different approach, as you know. Uh, we, uh, we, have a, we have our own investing system that I created with my mentors 34 years ago, starting 34 years ago. And I'll just say this uh, about uh, about uh, about why we why we've been right, I believe, is because we, we saw Trump winning. And uh, this is about the Trump economic miracle. That's what it is. People still haven't woken up to this yet, which is amazing to me that they can't see past their either their bias or their TDS or whatever you want to call it. Because I remember Reagan was the first uh, president I had a chance to vote for. In, I was 18 in 1980. And uh, the media told me that, that Jimmy Carter uh, was the guy and that uh, Reagan was going to send us into World War III. You know, all the same fear mongering we saw we've seen with Trump. But, you know, the market, uh, the economy took off. The mar- I, I became a broker in 85. The stock market doubled in three for my first three years in the business. The stock market doubled as Reagan's tax reform kicked in. So that's what's happening. Yeah, so right he now. was elected in 1980. Right. And the low in the market was August of 1982. I'm a bit of a market historian because I'm a dinosaur and I was there for a short <laughs> IBM at, uh, I believe we were 660 on uh, the Dow Jones down there. So uh, one thing one thing I think that distinguishes, uh, you know, history may rhyme. Uh, I don't, uh, with Reagan, it lifted a lot of people up. Not the one percenters, Kip. All right. And that's the argument the Democrats have now, because the Great Recession wasn't so great for many people. Was it for you? Well, no, but that's not we're not that's not Trump. Uh, uh, Right. Exactly. 
Okay, but the recovery that we've had uh, since then, even with the last couple of years, I guess you could say through employment numbers that more people are getting jobs at Home Depot and McDonald's and working two or three jobs to make it that uh, the middle class during this time frame has been decimated, which is different as Reagan lifted the middle class up. No, Don't listen. You, think? you just made you just made my case for me. You look. It took it take it took Reagan a couple three years to figure it out, and then once he did, like I said, I became a broker in eighty five. His tax okay. reform fully kicked in then. All and, right. And then the market doubled in three years. So uh, a combination of uh, tax reform, deregulation, and a pro business uh, uh, environment. As long as he gets reelected, I mean, we're going so much higher. I mean, we're going. All right, give me a number. Give me a, an S and P number. 4,000? I'm a Dow Jones guy. 50,000 by the end of 2024, second term. And it'll probably be higher because the, the sentiment is so incredibly bearish. You know, we got that, you're, that's very true. In fact, I had a guy on Monday who, you know, follows sentiment. And here we are pushing uh, all time highs. And there are so many bears out there that that's part of his rationale for 3,250 S&Ps or so going into the uh, uh, fall where we might have another correction. So it is very unusual. I, I have to hand it to you uh, that uh, there is a lot of skepticism, bearishness. Everyone's looking to sell it at 3050 for the end of wave three. Um, so you have that definitely working. People aren't euphoric at all, are they? No. And there's a macro uh, event globally that's, that's happening right now that I hear almost nobody talking about. And we've been focused on this for about a year and a half. And is that Globalism is dying, thank God, being kicked to the curb, being replaced by nationalism, populism. Everywhere we look, all over the world, I can name you 12 countries this is happening in, okay? Trump didn't start it. You know, it started in Hungary and Poland and then Brexit and then Italy, you know, Trump and all this, right? So this is hugely bullish because Why? We now we're taking down big government, right? The elites that ran everything are being kicked to the curb. It is no accident, by the way, I don't think. You're seeing some of these pedophiles now that are being arrested, right? The, 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 this was the arena they played in. All these criminals are being taken down, being replaced by exactly what's happening here in the U.S. Lower taxes, deregulation, pro-business environment, the regular people in a, in a populist movement, right, are, okay. are in power. And in this kind of environment, and it happened, look at Australia. They just... As much of a socialist country as they are, they realized that it wasn't working for them. So they elected a Trump-like guy. Their market's now at all-time highs as well. So this is a movement that's going to take at least a decade uh, to, to be fully, uh, uh, I believe, uh, reflected into the markets. And we're just – this is the bull market of a lifetime. This is the okay. bull market of our lifetime. Do you think, do you think that uh, Jay Powell should be demoted? Oh, I don't know. You know, I think uh, Trump won again. Look, nobody said this yesterday, but this is what Trump was saying last year. Of course, he was right again. Uh, race should never have been this high. Uh, Ten years going to one percent, probably below one percent, because wow. you look at global rates. I mean, yeah, we're the most stable country in the world. Why are our rates so much higher from a common sense point of view? What sense does that make? OK. All right. So uh, uh, do you believe that? Uh, you know, this move with all these bonds, you pay attention to all the uh, bonds that are now negative yeah. rates. And do you think that, uh, so 1% isn't quite negative, but uh, uh, free money for a long time, huh? I don't, I'm not smart enough to understand that, Dale. That's why yeah. I turned to guys like you to help me figure that I don't, out. I, I don't I, get it. I, I look, no one's ever experienced this before in their lifetime, even if you're 100 years old. Uh, these interest rates, I think, uh, date back uh, these levels to the Civil War, Kip. So, I mean, we're like at 200-year levels here. No clue. 100-year okay. levels. So, you know, anyway, so uh, being as bullish as you are, the stock market is also a market of stocks, a market mm -hmm. of sectors. Um, based upon your bullishness, uh, do you see uh, – rotation happening and favor certain sectors over others? Yeah, I think in a, in a market, this is a momentum liquidity fueled bull market. And these are the most powerful kinds of my career, at least, and the kinds that I've studied over the history of the stock market. And uh, you want to be, you know, especially in this environment, you want to, you got to be in tech and the semiconductors have led up and down. So we're, 
we're in semiconductors, we're in biotechs. You want to be where the momentum stocks are right now. And of course, also, we've got this major breakout taking place in gold and the miners. And nobody is really, maybe you guys are talking about it some, but most people are not even talking about, you know, GDX, the uh, miner ETF, closed at the highest level since, uh, yeah. uh, what, sept- no, yeah, September the 30th of 2016 yesterday. And uh, nobody's talking about them. I like that group a lot. Inflation. Inflation is going to come roaring back. I don't think there's any doubt about that. Okay. That's what they want, right? They're going to get it. Okay. So uh, we have monetary conditions working here. Uh, uh, Do you think that we're going to run into any problems in September with uh, continuing resolution and funding the government? I think that, you know, we... uh, you know, we always do a dance around it. Uh, do you think that going into this year, it might be different because of how polarized Congress is? I don't really follow those events. What I look at, Dale, are the market internals. This is what my mentors taught me. Okay. You know, the market internals are the foundation. So, you know, new highs, lows, up, down volume, advanced decline, and a few others that we look at. We look at the trend, of course, and, uh, you know, put call ratios, these kind of things. But, but right when the market internals are as strong as they've been for the last year, um, you know, any, any kind of reversal is short-lived. Now, if we start seeing, for example, if we see like an entire week of negative market internals, we, I, we'll be out of our positions. We what just, are the main internals that uh, you, you look at? Ad, advanced decline? Up-down uh, volume? Up-down volume. And 52-week okay. highs to lows. Okay. And, I, and they're all confirming new highs here? Oh, all conforming, all, all at new highs, all time highs. Okay. And we you know this is something that, again, my mentors wrote it down and tracked it on paper every day. This is what they did, and you know okay. they taught me some really good habits. When you know when I was when I was twenty three years old, I'm fifty six now. Can't it's hard to believe I'm even saying that. Okay. But, uh, yeah. So but the internals are. You're a young guy. Now. You're just a pup, Kip. So you know there are certain momentum indicators I follow, and then when I if you could see my screen. Um, the last confirmed high on the monthly chart was uh, January 2018. Okay, so that's quite a long time. And then we had that little pullback, and then we had a rally to new highs before the sell-off uh, late uh, last year. Okay, and that was a big sell-off. And now we're uh, we made a new high here. And I have a lower RSI, and this is a monthly. It's very mm-hmm. macro. And now we're making new highs here and the divergence is glaring on the monthly. And let's just go, uh, the divergence is glaring on the weekly, showing the same thing, making new highs, not even close. So we're diverging on some momentum indicators, maybe not the internals that you're looking at. Does that matter to you at all? I mean, we just not, not something that I follow. And, you know, I, I, I listen to you guys and I, and I, I want to pay attention to these, but it's not part of my invest. My investing system is made up of 12 screens. It's 70% fundamental, 30% technical. Okay. And right now we're at 10 out of 12 screens flashing bullish. Okay. And we're, 10 out, we're almost 11 out of 12. We're just a little bit overbought right now. If we, if the markets were to pause and for probably another week or so, and not do a lot, we would go to 11 of 12 screens. It's only happened twice in the history of, of this, uh, of our, of our system. What's and your so, uh, average duration of your holds on positions, Kip? Boy, I don't have that. Uh, I can tell you that I wish I had sold these positions. We had big gains last year before October, November happened, December happened. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That was a big mistake because the internals broke down. I violated my own system, and it really cost us. We still beat the S&P 500 again. We beat the S&P 500 15 out of 16 years. Uh, we won again last year. We're up double, essentially, this year. Uh, but when it, when we have 10 out of 12 screens bullish in my system, yeah, it's back up the truck and buy. Why did you decide to ignore your system? Could it be that your bias long term is just so bullish that yes. even your own work yes. was telling you to raise cash and you yes. said, oh, no, the big picture is still good. I, so I, uh, I, what did you learn? I bought into all the all the analytics uh, that were out there. And there's some great ones now that say that, you know, for example, what, what I learned, I'll answer your question first. What I learned was you got to stick. There's got to be discipline, man. If you, it, it, the best yeah. of the best of us can lose our way and, and and lose our discipline. And every now and then, I think the universe gives you that wake up call, and that's what it was for me. So we're locked and loaded right now. But I will tell you again, 
if our system starts to break down, I'm not, I, we won't stick in our positions. We have 12 positions right now. We use leverage ETFs and growth stocks. And uh, right now we're fully invested. Okay, Kip. So uh, your cell discipline next time you get something like that, will you let me know? I will absolutely let you know, my friend. Okay. So uh, you're bringing up uh, some of the ETFs. So you're probably long GDX, right? <clears throat> long, long, long in UGT, the three time leverage ETF for the miners. Oh, Nugget. Okay. Yeah, I'm nugget, familiar yeah. with Nugget. Yeah. We don't, so, I, my goal is not to, to just beat the market. My goal is to crush the market. I mean, I make I love no it. about it. <laughs> okay. So just looking for a nugget here because it looks like gold isn't done. A lot of people are saying there's a, a double top here. I haven't looked at nugget for a while. This is because it's a weekly chart. Okay. All right. Possible little double top. You have targets for something like this uh, long when you're term. long, long term. Yeah. Long term. The, the breakout, this, the, what's happening now in the miners and in gold reminds me almost exactly of 2002, 2003, which is when I first, in my newsletter, when I first recommended the miners and they just went on a tear. This environment looks and feels just like that for gold and for the miners. And it was an environment of, uh, of, 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 of good growth, right? But lower rates. And, uh, and then the market took off. You know, we had a, we had a if, the Fed hadn't, if the Fed had not hiked rates 17 straight times from 2004 to 2006, we wouldn't have had the financial crisis that we you were just talking about a minute ago, but this is the preamble to that. And this is, this is really when you want to own silver. I don't know. Silver's got some work to do, you know, okay. silver's, silver's got to get back, uh, back above a lot. It's got a lot of resistance ahead, but uh, gold is broken out as have the miners. Okay. So uh, look, any feeling on what's happening in, in the energy sector there? Uh, do you like that sector as well? been under some pressure but uh you know i was always told that when the markets really roll in it's tax and oils that lead so what do you think i oils. agree and uh uh for us we do a lot of relative strength chart work and for example uh, uh since beginning last november the miners began to outperform gold and that was the buy signal for us and so we're seeing now the same thing in energy stocks energy stocks for the last Really, they've had, uh, I believe it's since last October, energy stocks have been leading oil. And again, that's, that's, the, that's the buy signal you want to look for. You always want to see the underlying equity outperform the commodity itself. That's the buy signal. And that's happening both in energy and in the, in the miners right now. Hey, look, you're getting a new subscriber. Well, thank you, Dale. I don't know. I never did this before. But you're definitely part of my intelligence gathering universe. So uh, you're very welcome, Kip. So everyone here is Kip's uh, homepage here. And you can learn a lot about him. I've already done uh, uh, Ask Kip about his journey. And Kip, so uh, what's your service here? Uh, I see you offer a free, a free blog. Are you, uh, besides your blogs, uh, you're running money, you're managing money as an RIA? or What's what's the business model again? No, just just purely a publisher. I publish three different okay. uh, letters, and uh, that's what I've done for 15 years after I left Wall Street. And okay. uh, that's it. I have the VRA letter. We have our uh, uh, options program, and okay. another one that, uh, another one that we're launching right now. Okay. All right. So. Um... Uh, interesting. So it's really, uh, do you send out alerts or people just uh, would read them once a, once a week or every day? Or tell us a little bit about uh, the VRA Insider. It's a, it's a daily update. It comes out. As a matter of fact, I just sent the one out this morning before this call, this uh, interview started. Uh, and then many times, you know, those, if there's something happened, then I'll send out more, more than one update a day. But it's at least once a day. And uh, we have a two free week offer. Anybody has an interest, uh, come and check it out. See if this is a good fit for you. It's not for everybody because <laughs> I cannot. You're aggressive. I mean, you oh, come right it. out and say it. Yeah. You're aggressive. What's the worst drawdown since you've uh, been doing this that you, you've you had? And I know we've had a bull market, but there have been periods of you know, 10, 20% corrections. I'm not even going back to 2008. Uh, what, what's the worst drawdown on your aggressive portfolio? 
say, in the last three, four years? You know, I take a lot of pride in, in being out of the market during big corrections. And again, that, that, was, that was not the case last year. We were up big going into October. So the biggest draw that I've had has been this last year. Uh, okay. But we stuck in. We, 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 we were aggressive buyers in December, especially December 24th at the bottom. And we okay. averaged down our position. So it really saved us. But uh, the drawdown was about 30 percent. It was painful. OK. Yeah, I've been there. I, yeah. I've experienced actually 100 uh, percent drawdown at certain times in my career early. I'm with on. you, brother. OK, so uh, Kip, um, stay bullish. Uh, the economic miracle led by uh, nationalism. Uh, let me just ask you one thing. How do you feel about the dark side of nationalism, which is something and how does it mm -hmm. differ from the nationalism that the world went through in the 30s. I mean, I just, I, I, Dale, I just have to laugh at that because, okay. you know, I'm just a, laugh. I'm, I'm a, I'm a middle of the road guy that happens to be, I mean, I'm also an independent, by the way, I voted for Democrats, just like I have okay. presidents, but uh, there's insanity taking place on the left, absolute insanity. And that's just what, it, that's the way I see it. Uh, but the people that I know that, that are like Trump supporters, we're just good family loving people that want to see our kids have a better chance to succeed than we did, or at least as good a chance. And we're, we're honest, we're law abiding. We have no interest in being a brown shirt. We're not Hitler lovers. I mean, it's just, it's just crazy. I'm not saying you are, but I, I you know, I never implied that. I just no, I, I know that there, are, is, that there are tinges, just like there are tinges and to you, the whole thing, anything left is evil. No, but there are, all. but there are, but there are tinges of uh, right-wing fascism type of things that are not exactly humanitarian. Well, Antifa is is completely driven by the left. They're the ones okay. that are beating the crap out of people, right? I see okay. no Republicans doing that. Nobody on the right. So, you know, you got to really be careful. I think be careful you listen to in the media. Do your homework. Make your own decision. But it's a great question, and 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 it's something that you know, obviously, if if. Uh, that's why we need a strong two-party system. We don't want to go too far to the right. You know, that's dangerous. That's why we need the Democrats to get their act together and stop imploding, because that's a healthy system when you've got a healthy two-party system. Well, maybe we'll get a third going into this election. What do you think? You you have a libertarian. How come the libertarians in this environment can't put together a good um, candidate that can make a difference like a Ross Perot did? Right. Well, I was on the board of the Libertarian National Congressional Committee for a couple of years, and I saw it firsthand start to change where it, it deviated from being just libertarian to it started detracting some crazies. I mean, real crazy people got involved because they thought, well, you mean like like John McAfee, who uh, wanted to <laughs> get the nomination of the I've interviewed John. Anyway, uh, you know, it, it'd be nice because um, I have a lot of libertarian views. OK. And, uh, you know, I think a lot of uh, Republicans do uh, as well. You know, they're uh, fiscally conservative, but they want the government out of our personal lives. Right. So and, and that's only getting worse. And that's a real concern that I have, along with law enforcement. Look, I recognize what's happening here. And, you know, look, Trump's a big law enforcement guy and they're answering to no one right now. That's a dangerous environment. That's those are the kind of things that we can agree on. No privacy. Law enforcement yeah. overreaching, you know, uh, uh, you know, that's why we need a strong two-party system at least, right? Yeah. You know, uh, you know the expression, what good is uh, money that can't buy you happiness? What do you think of the opposite? What good is happiness that can't buy you money? Well, it, uh, <laughs> money, I'll, answer, I'll answer this way. Uh, money, uh, money may not make the world go around, but it certainly helps pay for the trip. Oh, that is beautiful. I'm going to end it on that. Can I use it? It's yours. All right, Kip, uh, you're my trading warrior brother. Thanks so much for hanging out with us. And uh, 50,000 uh, Dow uh, by what was the year? Uh, end of Trump's second term. End of Trump's second term, 50,000 Dow. If he loses, uh, sell everything, go short everything. And, and, and go to where? New Zealand? Wait. Uh, <laughs> find a find, <laughs> find a nice little haven to hang out in. You know, just don't go to the Dominican Republic, apparently. Okay. Kip, good hunting. 
I hope that uh, all your subscribers continue to prosper under your leadership. And uh, thank you for, you know, in this environment, it's great to hear a guy with conviction and instead of people that say, well, if it goes up, it might hit resistance and it could go down, but if it goes down and bounces, it could be okay unless that bounce fails and then takes out the low. You know, you just call it like you see it and congratulations on recovering from that drawdown. Thank you for your transparency. We've all lived through it. And, you know, I, I don't know about you, Kip, but I learned the most from the mistakes I've wow. made in, my, in trading and in my life. In the valleys, always. You learn nothing at the mountaintop. You learn everything at the valley. Okay, buddy. Everyone, Kip Herridge, and you could also follow Kip on Twitter at K Herridge, and check out his website, 